Hello everyone, welcome to Really Centralize, where tonight we're interviewing Gavin Wood from the Ethereum project. Hello Gavin. Hello. Um, so could you give us like a short introduction, I know it's quite hard because it's quite complicated, a short introduction to Ethereum, what it does, who it's aimed at, and, and what the impact is. Just... Sure. Um, so Ethereum is probably best described as a, a general platform. Um, for uh, writing down, describing, and enforcing agreements. And it does so through consensus. So in the same way that uh, with Bitcoin, uh, consensus is used in order to enforce um, effectively the digital checks that people write to transfer value between one another. Um, Ethereum sort of takes that and makes it general purpose. It allows people to devise their own um, social contracts, if you like, for um, uh, for entering into agreements and offering agreements between each other, so you might call it um, a sort of a social contract platform. Okay. Um, it's it's kind of it's aimed uh, mainly at developers at this point. So it's it, it is fundamentally a technology platform, uh, communications framework. So it's not actually an application. So it, there's no end users as such. Um, although kind of like web browsers, it's a, it's a modern application platform. Um, eventually, you know, we'll be looking to to uh, find sort of end users for our web browser-like platform, uh, so that people can use okay. these sorts of applications. So, from it, when when it reaches that point, from it's easiest to describe this from the point of view of like a normal end user. Uh, what will it look like? Like, what will the uh, how will it be say different from the web when it when it reaches the point where there are lots of end users? So I think, um, oddly enough, because this is this really is quite a revolutionary platform, but oddly enough, it's going to look quite similar to how the web looks now. Certainly in terms of presentation technology, where we'll be using the same sorts of stuff, HTML, JavaScript, CSS. Yeah. Um, we want to bring in some, some other sort of more interesting um, stuff as well uh, regarding the presentation stuff. So you might see a sort of general move towards much more um, Accelerated, you know, three D accelerated, glitzy kind of kind of an experience. Uh, but I think that will happen in time when uh, more and more people, uh, more and more developers, become aware of this and, and, and learn the technologies. Initially, it's going to look quite similar to the web. The the real difference will be the sorts of applications that you uh, that you're able to develop on it. So in the same way that the web didn't really have any offer, any way of, of doing money. You know, nobody invented a virtual currency on the web. It took it took um, a whole different kind of technology to do that. To, um, um, so we're going to see that that same sort of thing happening um, on on what you know the platform that you're using. So you think there'll be like radically different applications that people just don't have at the moment? So like lots of things that as wild as Bitcoin or what um, would they... <laughs> so it's that this is the real sort of crux of the matter, isn't it? What 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 kind of applications are we going to be able to, to support that, that you know simply cannot be done now for, for one reason or another. Um, now as the you know the platform developer, it's sort of I have some ideas, but I think really it's gonna the crazy real crazy stuff, the real different stuff is is gonna happen um, not not from you know people like me who say you you should do this and this and this and this, but it's gonna happen mm. from uh, just the imagination of various people that suddenly have all these new tools at their disposal. Um, but if you if you want my opinion then I would probably say one of the sort of interesting things are, are things that you know currently require um, trust and require too much uh, interoperation capability that the web can't really give. So one of the examples would be well I I might um, like to support a particular charity or a particular artist. Um, um, I would like that this um, support, this, 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 this be recognized as part of my identity, as part of my character and personality in all of my online dealings. And that's something that the web can't really provide at the moment. But it is something that a platform that has sort of trust, if you like, built in, it's actually trustlessness, but um, the notion that you can you can trust it when, I, when my identity is, is, is specified in posting or a shop or transaction of, of any sort, um, that that uh, aspect of my personality, my character, the fact that I give to these charities, the fact that I support these artists, is also displayed there with it. 
And so in a kind of a way that people like to wear badges on their coat to sort of say, hey, you know, this mm -hmm. is sort of who I am, I think we're going to see a lot more of this strong economic signals of who people are uh, going down and really sort of uh, woven into their um, that online identity. But this will be woven in a very different way from, say, if you use Facebook a lot, a lot at the moment then, to some extent, get bits of that weaving, but it'll be done in a way that um, is more decentralized, I guess. It'll, it's hard to convey how that how that's going to be different from the end user. It will be different. I can kind of imagine it being different. But so um, yeah, I mean, you're absolutely right to bring up Facebook. Now, Facebook is obviously a centralized authority, centralized entity. Um, they can decide what badges are allowed, what badges are not allowed, um, and they can make money from the badges as well. So economically, it's less efficient. Um, and basically, what we're going to do is provide a platform whereby applications like this, and not just this, but this is sort of one of the ways that go, um, will be uh, economically more efficient, so there'll be no sort of centralized entity making money off it to run its servers, um, and pay its shareholders. Um, and there'll be no central authority to say what causes are allowed and what causes are not allowed. Mm. And there'll be no um, issues if there is a if the centralized authority has, um, let's say, a, uh, a competitor, and the competitor then doesn't want to integrate your identity on that yeah. uh, authority with their own stuff. You don't have that because it will be a platform with interoperability. Yeah, so it's kind of as different as the the web is from CompuServe, but in a, in a decentralized way. So technically, then let's let's go from the other end. What can you tell me, like very quickly and to as general an audience as you can, as you can. Um, how does Ethereum work, and like, what's interesting about it in terms of like as a platform, and how it works as a, how it works as a platform? Uh, technically, it's it's so the odd thing about Ethereum is technically it's surprisingly simple. So if you can get your head around blockchain technology, which is the notion that um, a group of people, a large group of people, form a consensus about um, the uh, the meaning, if you like and um, the order of a particular set of transactions. So if you want to visualize it, it's sort of like you've got a lot of people, and rather than having one bank in the middle, or a, a, you know, a very few, a very small number of banks in the middle that have um, that, that, that clear checks through their system, but rather everybody sees all the checks, and they all agree that these checks happen in this particular order, and, um, and then there's no need for the banks in the middle. So the blockchain technology is yeah. more or less that. It allows um, a group of people to take these checks and uh, and you know organize them in order and then determine at the end of the day what everyone's account balance is. And it does so without um, that. If, if a majority agree that it has a certain uh, set of transactions, then everyone agrees that that's the set, basically. OK, so that's the core kind of cryptocurrency part. Um, and Ethereum is slightly different, though. It's not a currency you're making. It's something slightly different. So. That's now right. So now, now, now the um, the kind of the difference is that rather than there being checks, you know, X Y Z pays A B C such and such an amount uh, on a particular date. Now it's arbitrary contract. So it's I sign this arbitrary contract that I will do this. Or, um, ideally, we both sign the contract that we will both act in such and such a way um, into the future and. Mm -hmm. Anything that's, uh, that needs to happen within the system will automatically happen within the system. So if it needs to automatically pay you know, uh, some, uh, some third party to do a particular job on a particular date, then that can be actually specified in the contract that we both sign that goes onto the consensus network, and it will be executed automatically because everybody agrees it should be. If it was written like that, and I signed that. Uh, so this is different from a legal contract in the sense that in a legal contract it's kind of still just a promise and you have to be taken to court if you break the promise. Yeah. In this case, you actually program a robot that carries out the promise for you. As a group. Yeah. Is that yeah. That's it. the sort so of difference? No <laughs> I mean, in, in theory, with a legal contract, there's no option either, you know, because it's the law. You must do it. <laughs> There is an option. You can choose to not do it and then have to face the courts. Um, whereas here, you're okay. So, 
so everything that happens in a platform is constructed by these kind kinds of promises. So even something basic, like if I send a, a message, like a you know a text message type message, mm. that will be implemented using some kind of promise in some way. Is that right? So you could implement it on the blockchain uh, now. The issue is that suppose you write so many for every text message that's sent between people, that's a check. <laughs> that would be a lot of checks. So in reality, basic communications that don't require any um, any uh, agreements into the future. Most text messages are not you know, things that require agreements into the future. Yeah, I will meet you at seven. Will you be there? Yes, I will. All right, that's an agreement into the future, but are you really going to, you know, extract money from them if they don't turn up? No problem. Um, yeah. So those sorts of things will be handled by other um, communications mechanisms. The sorts of things like BitTorrent and things so, um, Okay, and those aren't those other methods aren't part of Ethereum. They're kind of separately so laid with it. Right. Yeah, that's right. So the Ethereum project does um, have some plans to implement some of these. Um, additional protocols, these additional communication streams. Um, but at the core of the Ethereum project, uh, the thing that most people call Ethereum, is actually just this blockchain stuff we're doing. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So if there was like massive take up of this, if you know literally millions of people were using it, can you give some examples of the kind of consequences? What would be the kinds of things that would start happening that that don't happen at the moment? That's a very interesting question. Uh, because um, this is the world's first um, sort of social contract platform. And as such, the sorts of consequences are those that are going to take place on a very uh, wide range and uh, broad social level, and less so on a sort of very particular technological level. So um, probably the sorts of things that are going to be revolutionized by this, this technology you know, whether it's Ethereum or someone who does something like Ethereum, um, they, they will be the sorts of things that um, we use, we tend to use law for at the moment, or if law is too inefficient, that we will just then able to do. So I'm thinking things mm -hmm. like time banking cooperatives, the sort of modern social movements that have really helped along by the internet, but perhaps don't have the, um, the ability to really form that, that a, a real social contract glue behind them. And these sorts of things are really going to take off massively when um, when we get this, this ability just to be able to um, uh, enforce social contracts automatically, to create these um, these human uh, frameworks um, for, for uh, involving people and agreeing as to how we should act and behave. So um, international institutions are another one that I think could potentially be massively overhauled. Um, the, the nature of the blockchain, the fact that everything is public, the thing's encrypted. Some things are signed, but nothing's encrypted. Everything is very public. It has to be because, of course, everybody has to be able to understand the meaning of everything to form the content. Mm. And so um, things that, um, that the finance industry and, and the large institutions that control international finance uh, can benefit from here are the ability to be completely transparent and regulated. Um, sort of outside, uh, without the need for having necessarily large and complex internal regulation systems. Oh. Effectively be outsourced automatically because everything's transparent and public. So if I had done something similar to the credit default swaps that made, that were incorrectly broken up that caused part of the financial collapse, if I did that, you're saying that maybe some government or regulator would observe the code in the blockchain and go, oh, this, this doesn't look right, or... That's exactly right. It would allow third parties to analyze the bigger picture and really understand where the money was going and how it was being stored. Uh, risk on a large scale would be able to be um, analyzed as a complex system rather than um, the sorts of things that you had to do before where you can only, uh, where everything is modularized and compartmentalized, you can only analyze a bit at a, a, bit at a time and it's private analysis as well, and so it's very hard to get a, a big picture of, of, of what thing, what is happening. And um, the people that did have the big picture, of course, warned about the financial collapse, but they were few and far between. Yeah, interesting. Okay, so um, how are you planning to get there? Like, so this is kind of a marketing question, I guess. Once developers have been using this 
for a while, and you've got you start to get some applications. So, uh, how are you going to get people to trust it and use it and and build something um, that's that your scale? Yeah. So, <laughs> I mean, you know, I, I'm an optimist. Perhaps I would hope that this will happen um, organically. Um, I think the platform is going to be so revolutionary that. Um, it's it's going to attract a lot of attention from developers, from, from people who are just really interested in playing around with this, um, the, the idea mm. of setting a contract. Um, certainly the idea of DAOs are, are very uh, uh, attractive to a lot of people who you know, need a bit of sci-fi and think, yeah, maybe this thing could happen, maybe I can, maybe yeah. I can make it happen. Um, I, I suppose as a developer, technologically, um, I, I have something of a background in usability. Um, human in computer interaction, and um, from my point of view, uh, a really important thing will be to try and get the interface right, so that people don't feel mm -hmm. it's an alien thing to work with. So we'll be we'll be sort of basing the the main um, uh, end user interface very much on the web browser. I'll probably have a few extra bits and bobs, you know, just just to sort of show off and uh, sort of push people to upgrade, as it were. But um, the the main sort of uh, user experience will be very much based around the notion. And go and address it at the top and, and the content area. Um, okay. And that's something that we really want to sort of stay with as we move forward. Um, but so, so people will have to install their own kind of browser like client, but once they do, it'll be familiar to use. That's that's the basic plan at the moment, for, uh, for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. The idea as well is that the, the existing web will be able to be used within this client, so it's sort of a, be able to. Backwards compatible, almost. Uh, yeah. Also, be able to so, use the decentralized thing. So, on your homepage, there's some examples of little fragments of code that implement contracts. So, would that code be made by a particular application developer, who would, and then you would have an interface that convey communicated that to you on top of that? Uh, precisely. Yeah. So, the the idea is that the contracts would form the sort of the back end that um, a sufficiently expert party could uh, analyze and be sure is. You know, Doing the right thing, um, and uh, the front end would still very much be uh, sort of JavaScript or uh, HTML style yeah. development. That, 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 you know, there's already a huge base of, of expertise, and so, um, we really want to open up um, uh, this technology to as many people as possible. So that's just the obvious choice. Yes, so anyone who can code JavaScript would be able to make like new interesting things on top of it. Is there? Very much. Yeah. I'm you kind of got me fascinated as to what will be the first thing that will take off, like what the, like what the killer. I hate the phrase killer app, but I'm going to use it. What the, what the killer app would be if there's some, I don't know. <laughs> it's hard to know, isn't it, until you it, until the market. It, it's a, you know something that I think a lot of people are going to play around with, and there's going to be a lot of experimentation on. So it, it will be very interesting. Okay, so um, finally then, if there are some people at home who want to help out with it, whether they're both developers and non-developers, what would you, what should they do and how should they get involved? Um, so we have quite a lively, um, at least among the developers, but you know, to some degree amongst the community, uh, Skype uh, chat rooms. Uh, we're also on IRC, so uh, getting involved, um, obviously you can send an email and all that. So the, the website details all of these um, methods for getting involved. Um, developers in particular, you know, as many as possible. Really. Um, there are several mm. clients that are currently being you know, sort of very active projects. We've got a, a Go client, a C++ client, and a, a Python client. Um, there's also people developing a Java client. So uh, we, we'd like as many implementations as possible. This is partly you know, to get as much adoption as possible, partly out of security concerns. The more implementations we have, the less mm -hmm. chance there is of any one an error in one of them, um, you know, breaking the consequences. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, really, it's just sort of come is in, have a look, see what the project's like, see what you've got to do. Is it at the stage where like a JavaScript developer, maybe a designer rather than a, a kind of hardcore backend programmer, could just install the client and write, or start writing applications on it? Or not quite um, yet. It will be very soon. So um, the the next release, which we're hoping to get out in the next week, uh, POC five, which is concept five, um, will have um, a JavaScript API, HTML, CSS. So you'll be able to actually start hosting um, uh, web-based 
uh, sort of dis distributed decentralized apps um, using Ethereum oh, okay. uh, as the back end. So um, we've also got a, um, a Node.js um, uh, interface on its way and a, a general sort of uh, JavaScript. Okay. Sort of, uh, and if non-developers, if non-developers are interested in pushing this forward, can they do something like buy your currency or anything like that? Um, so we're still, uh, yeah, we haven't we haven't started the, the sort of sale for, for selling the the, the, the crypto fuel uh, the currency, for but uh, hopefully that's going to happen in the next um, what date are we on? End of mid. Mid June, right? So hopefully in the next month, in the next four weeks, can, um, we would hope to start that. And then, of course, yeah, um, we want that distributed as as fairly and uh, as broadly as possible. So listeners are mm. interested. Mm. Buying some of that then. <laughs> okay, great, fantastic. Thank you, Gavin. That's a really interesting project, and I look mm -hmm. forward to seeing what, what people make with it. Um, thank you, Francis.